Hey everybody, welcome back to 4-Wheel Build. And today we're back working on our, on our 2020 VW Tiguan. So let's head over to the workshop and let's get started. He is one of the oh, one of the parts uh, in this car that we need to fix. Uh, we're waiting for the uh, for the body shop to uh, take the car. It's a few week wait. Unfortunately, uh, they're very very busy. Uh, but uh, we've got this front left hand half axle, and as you can see, there's quite a bit of damage here. Not even quite sure as to what this part is called. Uh, this metal coupling is broken. The shaft's broken broken off. Um, and it should actually look like this. Now this part we we've, we've got um, with the transmission that we bought. <laughs> we bought a uh, automatic transmission, and one of the parts that was in it was this, uh, which is the, exactly the part we need. Funny enough, uh, so got a good win there. Um, on top of that, got a uh, had to purchase a rubber boot because this one's cracked, and some uh, obviously some um, metal uh, fix fixing rings for us to be able to replace the boot. So. In today's episode we're going to fix this front half axle uh, and get this part replaced with this one so let's go and get that started okay so let's get cracking i got myself a old cardboard box here because i don't do not want my garage floor to get messy and it does get very messy just please be aware of that that this job is a very very messy job i'm not quite sure how to how the actual shaft is uh I'm, looks looks fine uh, but if it turns out that this is actually bad, uh, I'll get a uh, half axle and replace it. Um, this is, I guess, just for, more for instructions um, and I'll see. If maybe if this works out, we'll, we'll save ourselves a, a, a quid or two. Anyway, let's get started. So first thing we've got to do is take, these, uh, take this out. In order to take the rubber boot off, we'll have to uh, take off the bearings. So, so first, let's take this coupling off and let's get started with that. All right, so cut, it's coming in from the side. After finagling a little bit, this flange here and then came in from the side and twisted with the screwdriver and that came off quite quite easily so there's there's a i guess metal mount point whatever you want to call it undone so we should be able now to remove that that's, that's rubbish and get to the second part of this so now the second part is to actually remove this second metal ring that's located here that's going to enable enable us to uh, move the rubber boot back and get exposure to these bearings to take them off Okay, so let's do that now. So let's twist around and we'll use the same approach on this side as well. So hammer hammer from here on this side to lift this uh, up and then once we get that up, uh, get the uh, screwdriver in there and start hammering from outside. Right, so after a bit of finagling on this side, I was able to get this ring to off. And now there's there's a shaft exposed and there's a there's a bearing so now we've got to get the bearings off so we're going to knock them off uh so we'll put that on a piece of plank of wood and we'll use a block to just take them off and that should then enable us to take this uh, take this rubber boot off uh i could cut it off but we've got to get the new one on it as well somehow and we won't be able to do it without getting these bearings off so let's let's clean up the rest of this grease and then we'll take we'll take the bearings off right, to get this off what we've got is one of these three amp pores essentially what you need to do is actually clip that onto there um, and then get the, get the pony in here into this into this hole to line it up and essentially as you as you um, do up these bolts here uh, it pulls up there um, so it's going to be hard for me to do this one handed uh, so I'll disconnect now and get this taken off and we'll come back once I've got it done And there's a um, bearing holder that's been taken off. Quite easy with this tool. And a ratchet. Okay, so now it's got a nasty hole in it. So that's that's why I have to get rid of it, obviously. Apart from that, and obviously this piece here, which is, well, I don't think it's actually meant to have a hole in it. Yeah. 
Uh, so we've got a bottom of an end of the boot in place. So just keep an eye on this because there, there is markings as to where the rubber boot needs to go. So um, that's actually marked by this line here. And it's, it's a bit now. So now what we're gonna do is get a clamping tool, which looks like this, onto there and that clamp down. Okay, so that's that top piece is done. So now let's get our, I guess, try holder of the bearings and the bearings on and start putting this thing back together. in place all right so now let me get you in closer so you can see we've got this flange of the top coming out where the circlip goes into so now let's get the circlip installed okay and there's a the circlip so now our bearing holder will not will not come out all right now the last thing we have to do is get these bearings on and then fiddle this up with grease okay so let's do that now Right, getting the bearings back on is very similar to getting them off. So basically, you just got to line this up. Make sure they're flat. Okay, so there's our bearings. And now, what we have to do is get this on, get it secured in place. First of all, what we're going to do is put a new clip on and now pack this full of grease. There's going to be a lot of grease uh, put in there, and this is the stuff I'll use. And this is the stuff I'll use molybdenum grease. Uh, and you actually, yeah, you need to pack it in there fairly, fairly well. I need, there needs to be a lot of it in there, okay? So let's do that now. Um, and I think I need to actually get some tool to do this because I don't have anything here that I can pack this grease with. So let me go find something and I'll be back in a sec. All right, and I found a spatula that will be perfect for this. So a lot of grease in here. The rubber, the rubber seal actually goes into, into these grooves. Oh, so it's actually quite a nice seal. All right, guys, so we've gone back, gone from this old and broken rubber boot coupling to this. All right, guys, the next thing we've got to do is actually um, these lamps. So I bought new lamps. Um, now, one of them has come with all the modules, the other one didn't. So I've got to transfer all the modules from our old lamp. So there's the one here, which is obviously a little bit broken, but well, it has all the modules that I need. So I'll take the modules off and transfer them onto the new lamp. Uh, so for one, I can say I need to transfer one, two uh, modules, and then there's this piece. I believe this is to get all the moisture out from a, from a lamp. And it goes one, two, and then over here is where the moisture cable goes. All right, so let's just get this done. Let's just some hex, hex screws, and I think my hex is too big, too large, so I'll get a smaller one out. And this is a T20. Okay, so let's go and get this all things done and get on to the new one. Now on this lamp we've got four T20s. Now I'll 
was was and was for here let's undo that cable okay, so let's get the moisture cable on there maybe first i think it's a cable to bring out the moisture i'm not quite sure what it is if anyone knows please comment let's get the module out and it's gonna be hard for me to unplug it with one hand so i'll put you on a stand in case just in case some of you are needing to do and these bugs so to undo the plug uh, there's this little sort of latch at the at the back so when it's closed you have to press the latch in and then you'll be able, able to lift this up so don't force it uh, it needs to come in come out quite quite easily and get the second one of the modules in and i believe it goes in here like so only goes in one way so if you get it wrong like i did with my first one i think and i think i might have got this one wrong as well Okay, that's it, they're done. So I'm just gonna take a look at the old lamp, and make sure there's no other modules which I'm not noticing. There's obviously this uh, heat sink that's that's here, but we've got we've got else here, so that's that's fine. I don't need to transfer that. I think we're done. That's that's all we've got to transfer. And look at these sick headlights guys. Full LED. Ah oh, that should be awesome. Uh, looking brand new. That was a good purchase. All right guys, so like, as you can see, the TIG one is gone. I've just packed the front fender and also the um, hood into the car. And that's gonna get dropped off to the, the body shop. And then I'll come back once again uh, and drop off the front bumper. That's all he needs for the, for the time being. All the other parts he's got. So let's go and visit the body shop and drop off the remainder of the parts. As you can see behind me, uh, 220 VW TIG1 is back. It's all the body work done that we needed. So starting off with obviously replacing the hood, getting all these um, uh, windshield, the bottom windshield uh, panel panels done. The eye pillar. Obviously the, the front left hand fender. The bumper bar, grill, lights, everything's back on, including the uh, right hand side fender, fender, which was already there. Oh, actually, let me take, give you a look uh, underneath. So we still got to get the hood release cable fixed, but ta-da, there's still no engine. I'll take a look inside here. And let me maybe bring the light a little bit closer. This whole front support structure was damaged that's been replaced as has all the, the front uh, apron has been has been fixed up um, the, the body shop actually done a really really good job on that uh, so that's actually looking quite neat so the, essentially the car is now ready to go to the spray booth and get sprayed but um, before we do that um, as you can see here Yes, there is some dints, so this this hood that I purchased has a little bit of a dint in it. And also the roof. So the roof has a couple of dents here, here and there. Uh, there's a little bit of a dent on the right hand rear door, uh, plus including that big one, which I think I might have showed you a little bit earlier. But also there is, there is some damage next to the hood right there. So there's some dents. I'm not sure if you're gonna be able to, if I'm gonna be able to pick it up right there. And there's a there's a dent there. Um, I think someone's actually hit something with this antenna uh, because on the antenna itself, it, there's a uh, ma and the antenna is actually moved back a little bit as well. Uh, so essentially, what I've got is a a, um, a PDR guy that's gonna come out and he's gonna be fixing up those dents using the uh, spot, the painter's dent removal method. Uh, plus there's, on the front door, on the damaged side, there's some dents there, which you need to pull out. So no, nothing major, but uh, there is some work. And I wanna get this done before we go to the paint shop, uh, just in case there's something that, that can't be taken out properly, then the, obviously the paint shop can take care of it. 
I mean, my biggest concern obviously is this, this dent here. But in order to do that, uh, to remove this dent, uh, and in particular this one here, I've got to remove the sunroof. Uh, the PDR guy said, look, he's not gonna, he's not gonna take, the, take this on, take this job on, if the sunroof is still in, because he's obviously scared that the glass might break. So today, I'll be removing the sunroof. So I've got my brother-in-law coming over, son family. Uh, he's gonna help me, but basically I'm scared that uh, if I undo all the bolts that the whole thing's gonna fall and crack. Uh, so I'm taking, taking a fair bit of precaution to make sure that, um, a, that the sunroof is safe. So let me just give you a quick look inside, how the, how the on the in inside that's been done. I mean, if you recall, this was all smashed up. This whole sort of front cowl section, I don't know if you call it, but the bottom of the windscreen section. So that was all smashed up, so that's all being fixed up. The gaps are really, really nice. Let me give you a look at the gaps. So starting here, if you take a look at that gap right there, that's looking, that's looking mighty fine. And if you look at the actual gap on the front hood, that's looking really, really nice. And also on the other side, you can see the gap here. The body have done a really, really, really good job on this. So let's get onto the sunroof, get that removed and get ready uh, for the PDR man to, I guess, fix or fix up all our dents. I uh, said so to get the roof, sunroof off, first things we gotta do is actually unhook these water runoff tubes or channels, whatever you want to call them. There's, there's four, there's one, well, there's four, there's one at each corner. So we've got to get those undone. Once that's done, we've got to get the, all the electrical plugs undone and, and get that off. All right, guys, so we've got the sunroof out. <clears throat> Do this a little bit. Put a blanket on it so you can see the sunroof is out. And that's, that's going to give us the ability to now get underneath and be able to work this work this roof dent. So that the PDR guy is coming on Saturday. So I'll come out and we'll see if he allows us to film some of the work that he does. And there's, this, there's a sunroof. It was actually quite easy to, uh, in the end, to pop out. Uh, although, uh, I do not recommend doing this by yourself because it is heavy. It is actually quite a heavy piece of, best to have a couple of people when you're doing it. Alright guys, so that's going to be for, for, for today. And I'll see you when the PDR man comes along. And once the PDR man uh, removes the dents, we'll be popping the sunroof back in. All right, so we had the PDR guy here. And unfortunately, I don't have any footage. Um, he didn't want me to take any footage whilst he was here, so, which is fair enough. But guys, I wanted to give you a look as to what he done. So let's go through all the panels and all the dints and dangs that we actually had here. So first of all, starting off with the hood, uh, there was a, then somewhere here. Um, now I'm not quite sure if you guys can see. Um, that's been pulled out. It's actually been pulled out really nicely. There was a couple of things right there, uh, which I didn't even spot. He spotted it with his, I guess, special light. Uh, he fixed those up as well. So the hood, it might just need a smidgen of Bondo here. Maybe. Um, there's a sort of big scuff mark here, but that's, uh, so he pulled out that out as much as he could. Okay, going going forward. So the biggest the biggest I guess dent was right here on the on the roof, right in this sort of in this area here. So uh, we had to actually take the uh, roof rail off. Now there's not quite sure if you'll be able to pick it up, but there is still a smidgen of couple couple of dents, um, ones which she couldn't pull out really. Uh, but but overall, um, I'm actually quite happy. This was this was actually quite a stressful <laughs> spot for me because um, the dents here were you know were quite quite large. Okay, next thing is the, the antenna. Well, not a large thing, but there was a dent in the rear of the antenna. Uh, that's been pulled out. The antenna is now sitting really nicely. So next dent was on the rear, and let me maybe get some light here first of all. Well, next was actually quite a two rather large dents right here uh, now once again if you scoot along yeah uh, maybe this is some minor 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 
visibility of it, but I mean, it's really, really minor. So that's all been taken out. As you can, if you recall, there was a dent right there. Uh, that dent is still there. Uh, now going on the bottom here, quite a bit. So it's, it's a lot flatter now. Um, I, I guess, well, the, the idea behind it is to use as less a uh, little bondo as required. So we don't have to use too much. And there was a little thing right there. Uh, that's also been pulled out. I uh, hasn't been fully pulled out. Uh, I do still feel a little nick there, but uh, it's quite, quite minor, I think. That's it in terms of the PDR work. That's all been done. So what's really left for me to do now is first of all, um, put the roof rail back on. Now the roof rail is uh, damaged. So I got a replacement, but the replacement has, I guess these, these feet, whatever you want to call it, the, the actual mount points, uh, they're silver. So I got to take these ones off, put them onto the new one and just replace this, this part here. So let's go and do that right now. All right, so I've got to now put these nuts on here and do up to 10 newton meters. So it's a number 10 socket, a 10 millimeter socket. Okay, I'm just gonna do it up just lightly and then And there's a rail that's been put on, nice and sturdy. Uh, prior to the PDR guy actually coming coming here, this rear end was actually lifted up. I was actually quite worried that we might even get some water get, get into the car if it rained. But now it's looking fantastic. All right, so now let's get up to the sunroof and get that sucker in. sunroof or the panoramic roof that's been installed and it's looking mighty fine guys all the gaps on it are ideal it's all looking good all right newton meters done and it's a matter of now getting these water water uh, lines connected to make sure any rain water is taken away that's the two rear ones. Okay, right, that's done. And now all I've got to do is just connect up the electricals. This should just fit up nicely. Alright, that's it. The sunroof has been replaced. So guys, today is the day that the 2020 VW Tiguan build is getting shipped out to the paint shop. It's gonna get painted uh, and it's gonna come back in a couple of weeks and it's gonna be looking fantastic. So let's get the car loaded up and get it shipped out. So there's, the car, there's the car and there's the man with the trailer. So we'll, get, we'll get this loaded up and get it shipped out. The front's sitting up because there's not much weight there. The engine is still out. And there's Sebastian, our friendly man with the trailer. And we've got the car loaded up. And off to the paint shop it goes. Check this out, guys. Kurt Diazur. Some, maybe some famous movie star. Grab this. Securing the car in place and we'll be off in a minute. Alright guys, we've dropped off the car, the 2020 VW Tiguan at the paint shop. I've been asked to come and cut a hood there because the hood itself is painted for one, uh, I guess the body color on the outside and there's a different color underneath. Um, so the paint shop needs to get that color selected so they can get that um, paint color for the new hood that, or the, the replacement hood that we've got. Uh, and also to do all the painting within the actual engine bay area. So let's get that hood out and let's cut a piece out. So 
So before I can cut the piece out, I need to just strip bare all the uh, rubber pieces, uh, the lining I've already taken out. We need to get this replaced into uh, into our new hood. All right, so let's go go ahead and get that done. Now, of course, safety first. So let's get our protective glasses out. I'm gonna cut the hood. I just uh, so square out with this with this uh, edge right here as well. Okay, I don't actually have a stand with me, so I'll go ahead and cut this out and see you in a sec. Actually, let's put the let's put the safety glasses on. Now let's get cutting. There's a piece, as you can see, on the outside, on the inside it's actually got a different colour. It's like an undercoat of some sort. It's lighter on one side, and it goes darker. Alright, so we'll drop that off to the body shop, sorry, to the paint shop tomorrow. Um, and I can then mix that, mix that paint. In the next two, three days, we're gonna go pick up the car from the paint shop. All the paint and bodywork should all be done by now. So we're gonna go pick it up and bring it back into our workshop. I guess mounting all the interior pieces uh, back into it, dashboard and things like that, all the electronic pieces. So now I can sh ship it off um, to the mechanic and we'll go get the engine and transmission put in. Plus get a lot of the electrical work uh, started. Now, uh, one of the things that when I purchased the car, uh, I noticed is uh, this is the carpet, as you can see. Either the person that was driving the car shat himself, or, or I think they had a, some sort of a chai, hot chocolate latte whilst they were driving, and during the accident they dropped it, so the carpet's looking, well, interesting, to say the least. I'll, grab, I'll take it home, I'll get the pressure washer out, and we'll get all that chocolate stain washed out and make sure that it's nice and clean when it comes time to mount it into the car. So let's go put this in the, into, the, uh, into the rubble bus and take it home and get this washed. So let's go back, trusty power washer out and see if we can get this gunk out. Quick five minute wash, and we've got most of that gunk out, there's still a little bit right there, S speckles of it. So let's do another round, and then we should be okay. Uh, and the, car the carpet has been washed, and for the most part, and this is the water, what's the worst part around here looking nice and clean now and maybe just put a little more speckles on it but I think we can probably get that out with a vacuum cleaner in a brush so I'm just gonna let the water trickle down it hasn't been soaking wet all the way through so in a spot where I've actually washed it quite thoroughly actually quite dry it's got this backing on the on the rear here and doesn't seem to go have gone through it so this is the west areas around here so yeah, I'll let it, I'll let it drip dry for, for a couple of hours and I think that should be fine and I'll put it inside, just make sure it dries out overnight. And then when the car comes in, it's ready to go into the car. Now guys, look at that. We've picked up the car from the paint shop. Got a new, that's Seba putting the car up on the trailer and we're back, oh, going back to the workshop.